Konnichiwa, what's up, Yuki Jins? This is your Yuki Net for another Yuki News where we cover interesting topics and events in the land of the rising sun. Nihon. Yuki is taking a break because she is still scared after watching horror clips for Spooky Yuki. Before we start, don't forget to like our Facebook page and join our subreddit community where we review Japan related memes. I'll put the link in the description. Alright, on to the news, Mairimasho! There is a Twitter viral video of Aika san where she kindly talks to her grandfather using their language, Yonaguni Go, from Yonaguni Island located in westernmost part of Japan. <laughs> Aika is currently living outside the island and she took this video when she was back home for vacation. If you listen carefully to their conversation, it is entirely different from our Hyojun Go or the standard Japanese. According to the comments on this Twitter post, many people from Okinawa didn't understand their conversation. There are only limited people who actually understood it because Yonaguni is one of the eight endangered languages in Japan. For living animals, we use the word endangered animals, but we do also have that for languages. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO has registered 2,500 languages and dialects that are endangered. For Japan, we have eight languages and dialects such as Ainu, Hachijo, Amami, Kunigama, Okinawan, Miyako, Yaeyama, and Yonaguni. According to UNESCO, Ainu is indicated as severely endangered and only 15 fluent speakers remained in 2011. Ainu is a language from the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido and one of the reasons it has been a serious problem is because it has no written alphabet and their traditions can only be transmitted orally. I know you already know that thank you in Japanese is arigato gozaimasu but in Ainu language it is iya iraikere. I imagine every language has its own unique view of the world, so I think you can say that the view of the world dies when a language dies. Do you have your own Shimakotoba or island language? Let me know down in comment section how it is being preserved. As the US election concludes, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology or Monbuka Gakusho is considering whether to start civic education from elementary school instead of high school since the legal adult age will be lowered to 18 from 2022. Although the voting age in Japan has already changed to 18, According to the report compiled by their expert panel, the voting rate for 18 years old from last year's upper house election was only 35.62%. There was a campaign viral video delivered by a group of Japan senior citizens. Let's watch it.年金が破綻する Twitter 
私たちは選挙に行く私たちは選挙に行く私たちは選挙に行く I love how they use reverse psychology to convince the young generation to go vote, but sadly, the report still shows a very low voting rate. I remember we have Kominka, which is civic education, and we only started learning it from senior high school. It might be difficult for young kids to completely understand our political environment, but I think the school and the parents play a big role in how they will inform and empower them. So they can become active participants in democratic processes. Our new Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga has made a statement about his new environmental policy in his long awaited pledge last Monday. He wants to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050 as a measure against global warming. Observers say that his decision was likely influenced by recent climate pledges from China and other nations. To accomplish this, the government intends to raise goals for renewable energy. It currently projects that about 25% of electricity will come from renewable energy by 2030. However, this is just one of his many plans, and I don't want to go through all of it because it may change. But I think it's a good start towards、uh, zero carbon emission. Plans are plans, but I would like to see. The actions that will take in the future. Japan has put off a decision to release treated radioactive water from Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. According to the Economy, Trade and Industry, Minister Hiroshi Kajiyama, the government has no plan to announce a decision on what to do with over 1.2 million tons of treated water. The Fukushima complex is expected to run out of water storage capacity by the summer of 2022. With contaminated water increasing by about 170 tons per day. Although International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Grossi said during his visit to the plant in February that releasing the treated water meets global standards of practice in the industry, it doesn't mean that they are solving the problem. Moreover, they are just adding a new problem, and I am glad that Japan didn't release it. For now. In that treated water, there is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen called tritium, and getting it into your system can cause internal radiation exposure. Toden or Tokyo Electric Power stated that the amount of tritium in water is always within the standard amount when it is released, but what should be removed has not been removed. There is an international agreement called the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and Article 192 says General obligation. States have the obligation to protect and preserve the marine environment. Also, in Article 194 says measures to prevent, reduce, and control pollution of the marine environment. I understand that international law is vague and unenforceable. But the act of dumping even treated water in the ocean seems unsafe to me. Tritium separation is also a good way to do instead of releasing it into the ocean. Why is Japan jumping to that conclusion so fast? I wonder if Mr. Suga is in a hurry or something. I mean, he just made that environment pledge for zero carbon emission by 2050, but wants to release this treated water into the ocean like. A few weeks ago, I am interested to see what his true motivations are around his environmental policies. Hmm. On to our last topic. An explosively popular dark fantasy manga series, Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer, has been a big hit this year. It is a story set in Taisho era when Japan is infested by human devouring oni demons. It follows protagonist Tanjiro Kamado and his sister Nezuko Kamado as they seek a cure to Nezuko's demon curse. Tanjiro and Nezuko become entangled in the affairs of a secret society known as the Demon Slayer Corps that have been waging a secret war against demons for centuries. The movie Mugen Nesha or the Infinity Train opened in Japan on Friday, October 16, and within 17 days it had pulled in around 15.8 billion yen and ranked in the top 
10 Best in Japanese Box Office History. Demon Slayer and Corona have an interesting connection and that is also why it was very popular. The anxiety of people towards this coronavirus is thought to be associated with the image of a demon. Demon Slayer is a story that began with a curse. According to a historian Mr. Michifumi Isoda's comment in Tokoro Japan show, the way people think of monsters has changed throughout time. Before, Japanese people thought that demons should be shooed away but now because of this demon boom, it is getting popular to be seen as something that should be defeated. The appearance of the demon slayer who fights powerful demons mirrors the history of the human race that has also been fighting hard to eradicate this pandemic while fearing the coronavirus. This fear of the coronavirus and the sympathy and wanting to support the demon slayers has led to a big success. By the way, I heard that in Kyushu, there is an infinity train inspired by demon slayer running operated by Kyushu Railway Company. It will only run for a limited time from Kumamoto Station to JR Hakata Station. I wish I could go there, but it is just too far. Kyushu is in the southern part of Japan. I am very excited to watch the series and the movie, so please... Please, onegai, no spoiler in the comment section, minasan. Okay. Alright, I think we're gonna end our video here. Thank you so much again for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I post a video every single week. Also, please give a follow to our shop Instagram at Arta Asharika. Until next time, Yukine Deshita, signing off. Jane!